Hello and welcome to part 3 of our Chaos Jug tutorial series. In the last episode we got our jug falling apart and now we want to make it so we can hit it with a weapon like a baseball bat and that will cause it to fall apart using a master field actor. So let's take a look at how we make one of these actors and how they work. So we're now going to try and make our jug break when we hit it with this baseball bat. Um, so the way this works is we're going to add a master field actor to our game and when we swing our bat we're basically going to spawn in this master field actor and cause damage to our chaos so to do this we're going to go and create a blueprint class I search all classes down here for in, uh, a master field and you'll see fs master field choose that and we'll call this one fs impact and we can open this up. Now, as you can see here, the impact here is a, basically a sphere. And the way these work, Epic have made this thing which we can apply a strain or a magnitude of damage to a fractured asset. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is change the type for activation over here on the right and the class defaults from delay to trigger. So as, uh, as soon as I say go, it'll trigger off and deal damage. I then want to go to the event graph and go to begin play and take it to trigger. And you'll see CE trigger. Okay, now it's start off straight away. The next thing is we'll change the strength of this thing. So you can see here, if I put this uh, in here, and leave it like that, hit play. Yeah, it's not too bad. We'll see how it goes. So another thing you can do is affect its strength as well. So if we were to put that into our scene and see how that responds to this impact spawning on it, I'm going to change it to simulate. And you see there, it's giving it a good whack and it's gone pretty far. Yeah, so the strength of it is quite large. I probably don't want it to be that large. So let's go ahead and make that a little bit less. So what I like to do here is in the details panel is fine tune and find the numbers that I want and then go back and change it on the master one. So over here, we're going to type in uh, radial magnitude you'll see radial magnitude is set to 750 i'm going to change this down to say 50. simulate again not too bad i'm going to give it a bit more strength probably so i'm going to change that to 100. a bit more let's do 200. Yeah, that's not too bad. We'll do that. Okay, and there's our broken jar, basically. So what we're going to do to our impact as well is then, as well as set the value on our radial magnitude to 200, we're also going to change its uh, lifetime. So do life span to use lifespan. Turn it on. And you can leave it as one second. That should be fine. Okay, so yeah, and that should spawn in and remove itself from the game once it's finished doing its job. So to fine tune that magnitude down, we go to the impact blueprint and you can search for the word magnitude. And these are the values we're going to change. We're not worried about strain because we're not applying strain, but magnitude input, radial magnitude we've changed already. Let's change directional down to 200 as well. I'm going to change the magnitude input as well to 200. Let's see how that behaves. Uh, we may have to put in a new one. Let's just take that one out. Put a new one in.
Okay, so we are going to spawn this impact when we do our attack. So let's take that off. And instead, we're going to go to my play character. And here is my attack. I'm just pushing the one key to play montage. That's all. But I'm going to go to that montage. And we're going to apply the force at the end of this sword here. So I'm going to go across to this point here. And this is where I want the notify to begin. So we've got a couple of options. We can make our own notify or we can use make use of the montage notify. Either or is fine. So I'll show you with the custom notify. But if you want to do a montage notify, just right click on here now, go to end notify and choose montage notify. Then everything we're about to do, you just put into there. But as I said, we're going to make our own notify. Keep it a bit cleaner. So I'm going to go to blueprint class, search for anim notify. Choose the top one. And in notify impact. Open this up. And then on the blueprint here, we go to functions, override, and we'll do receive notify. Click on that. And it'll open up the graph for your receive notify. And this will basically fire off once it hits this stage in the animation. And what we want to do is simply just spawn in. the actor from class, choose the impact, and we're going to spawn it at the uh, location that we specify. So we're going to give it a mesh and get socket. Get socket transform. Plug that into the spawn transform, and we'll just change this to impact socket name and then make sure you tick the box to confirm it's been done so we do that and then we're going to go back to our animation find the point in time where you want that notify to begin and on the notifiers track we're going to right click on it add notify we should see our impact notifier appearing in the list at the bottom so we choose that and you put it anywhere else that you may have it to be but you see it's spawning those notifiers in now I want to give it a socket correctly based upon what our character is doing. So I'm going to go to the skeleton tree, go to the hand, and we'll go to hand. Uh, actually, it won't be this one. It'll be, we want to go to the player character one. That's it. Go to player character, skeleton, that's right. And we're going to go to the hand here and add a socket. impact and i'm just going to move that forwards a little bit so go to there and we're going to move it actually in the x forwards like that so we should hopefully now have this playing in the game there you go Again, cool. Okay, not too bad. Um, I might actually bring the socket here closer to the play of Rue. Actually, we'll do the hand R uh, bone, I think, to get a better directionality from it. I think. That's better. I like that. So there you go. We can now break apart our jug as we would expect to do in a game. But sometimes we expect a gem or something to appear when we smash it open. So in the next part, we're going to go through the process of making it spawn an object in as soon as it is broken open. You can watch the next part right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members for the continued support in the channel. Thank you for watching, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.